Hi there. In this video, we are going to be learning how to use stable diffusion with Bubble. So if you don't know what stable diffusion is, it's an AI powered uh, Im text to image generation model. There are other models by stable stability AI as well. Uh, but the one we're going to be looking at here is the text to image model. So we've got an astronaut riding a bright red bicycle with wheels on the moon uh, with the Earth in the background. And you can see it's a uh, pretty accurate uh, and what we're going to be learning is so uh, astronaut. Yeah, you can generate an anime uh, style image or variations of an image. Uh, we can open bubble and generate an anime image. So this is what we're going to be lear learning in this tutorial. We're going to interface with Stability AI's own API, uh, which is uh, I mean, there are many ways to host a stable diffusion model. Uh, you can host it on Replicate, Banana Dev, or you can directly call the API from Dream Studio as well. So we're going to learn how to connect Bubble to Dream Studio, as learn a bit about the prompts, and also especially learn how to keep our special secret prompt uh, text and parameters safe in the backend. Uh, yeah, so let's dig in. And before we dig in, uh, please do like this video. Uh, it really helps the algorithm. Thanks. So let's dive right in. So we are opening uh, beta.dreamstudio.ai. This is their web UI interface where we can play around with it. Uh, we can have a prompt, negative prompt, style. Uh, we can have some various settings here, width, height, seed, model. And this is what uh, you can play around here. Uh, I'm just going to use the astronaut riding on a bright red bicycle as an uh, example, uh, but you can go ahead and do whatever wedding photography or flowers, animals, whatever. So we're going to go here. You should have an account already. Uh, if you do have an account, you can purchase some credits. And then here we can create an API key. So we're going to create one API key copy this API key and the API documentation is here, platform.stability.ai. Okay, we're looking at the REST API. Uh, we're looking at V1 generations and text to image. Okay, so in terms of uh, in bubble, if you look at the plugin API connector, uh, the easiest API call to start with is the get API, get account, just to flesh out the authentication mechanism. Uh, the authentication mechanism here is uh, simple, just a header in the API, uh, API, REST API here. So yeah, just pass authorization, the key. So it's nothing complicated. If we look at get account, API, uh, there's authorization, API key, private key in the header, and we can initialize this call and we get our account data. Uh, that's just, this is just to flesh out the authorization. Uh, but the actual API endpoint text to image generation, uh, it's this one. So generation, text to image generation, lots and lots and lots of different parameters. We're not gonna, we can't cover them all. Uh, if you would like some more insight on prompt engineering, please do drop a comment below. Uh, thanks. So sampler, sample, seed, steps, uh, but yeah, this is the endpoint itself, API stability. It's a post type. Uh, we've got a JSON in a body, okay? Uh, almost all of these map to something here. So if I click advanced width, height, prompt, strength, generation steps. So it's width, height, I think CFG scale, if I remember is prompt strength. Generation steps is uh, steps. Uh, what I found, is that the API actually exposes more options. So for example, you can have a series of prompts, text with, with different weights, and here you can have like one prompt and one negative prompt. There are some special, uh, if I remember it was brackets, which gives uh, an extra weight to the word inside the bracket here. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so prompt strength, C model, and let's see. So. It's a simple post API call. Post. We're gonna replace. Uh, we're gonna pass the engine ID uh, in the URL itself. So the engine ID. You can check out the list of engines from here. V1 engines get list. And here's what. I mean, you can make the API call and get latest engines and their IDs. Uh, but this is the one we're gonna just run with for now. So I have a feeling 1.5 has been deprecated. I have. It may not allow. Uh, it may not be allowed anymore. But yeah, we're going to just go with this one. It's one of the latest beta ones. So we're going to go with this one, keep it private. 
content type application json except application json and we've got the body json here and uh, of course we can tune it by adding like conditionals if it's i'm not going to mess it up but you can use the square brackets uh, to make it more parameterized uh, if needed uh, i'll describe how we at the moment do it uh, but you can use this uh, parameters as well it helps now in terms of our front end uh, very simple this is just a multi-line input generate button uh, the workflow just makes that API call and passes the multi-line value uh, into the API. We get back, so what do we get back from here? We get back a base64, a very long base64 string. Let's just try it out at the moment, one second. So we're gonna reinitialize the call. And it takes a while, so it can take a while. And Bubble were recently updating uh, the API response timeouts uh, to allow like uh, larger open AI values. If I click edit raw data here, I can copy the whole text and take a look at it in this website, base64 to image converter. And this is what we, what's that? Oh, it came back the similar same response. So we're missing, as you can see, we're missing the bicycle and the wheels here. So the AI can be a bit hit and miss sometimes from our experience. It, it, but you have to tune it. Once you tune it correctly, you can get predictable results. Like I think I was trying it with a bright red bicycle and it once gave me a bicycle without wheels. And then I gave it like, I, I need one with wheels, please, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, but that's fine. So in terms of our kind of front end back to the bubble, we're, we've got multi-line input, generate button, simple API call, take the base64 input value, that's just an alert. And now how do we display base64 value? So we can use a plugin to turn that base64 and save it into a file, save it as an image file, totally fine. Uh, we can make an API call to our self. Uh, if we make an API call to the file upload endpoint, uh, what was it? It was, I think, file upload endpoint. We can pass a base64 uh, JSON and it will uh, save that in the bubbles database as well. Uh, but here right now, we're just gonna use an HTML element and write a basic kind of HTML width, height, base64 image, and just display that in a state here. So if we just give a quick uh, run through of this, click the generate button. And it does, as I said, it does take a while. And you can uh, add like spinner loaders on what on <laughs> See, you've got one without wheels, right? Red bicycle with wheels on the moon. Uh, so you, you have to massage the AI uh, a bit. Uh, if we generate it again, hopefully we get one. Yep, we get one with wheels this time around. Excellent. So now, key question. Uh, we've built like three, four, uh, multiple uh, open AI or AI powered kind of web apps for clients. And uh, we've realized one thing, uh, it's very easy to accidentally leak the prompt in the front end, this particular prompt. And this is, a lot of this is the secret sauce. So, oh, with wheels, oh, bright red, or how to, what, what parameters do we need to pass? Uh, the steps, the seed, the style, and a whole host of other kind of parameters uh, is that that's the secret sauce, essentially. If you leak that, it's not good at all. So how did we go about doing this? Uh, we've got this secret generation button uh, but before going into the workflows here what i'm going to show is the database so we need to define two data types uh, models okay uh, models got the name the name can be public not an issue prompt private seed private steps private style private so the privacy rules are configured only the name is allowed the rest is private uh, we need another one called generations. And in generations, we've got the related model, uh, a status processing done, and an image base64 encoded. Uh, so what happens here in the front end, instead of actually making the API call in the front end, what we do is we just create a database entry. Okay, we don't, we don't do anything else. We just create a database entry and save that into a, this generation so that we can refer to it in our HTML element. But we just create a, a DB entry. And in our backend, in a database trigger, whenever a new generation has been requested, 
we make the API call in the backend. We pick the related model seed, the related model style preset, the related model step, related models prompt, whatever is private. So this is our private context. The, the user, the front end user cannot access these secret parameters. And once this API call is done, we save that image base 64 uh, into here. We make the status done if there's like a queuing and the, like uh, you get into a, a spike of traffic and you've got too much stuff happening. You need to know how the status is processing or done. Uh, and that's it. The The front end then takes over. The front end just displays uh, oh, image base 64 is ready. Let's just run with it. So if I refresh the page and if I click, uh, we, we've got like multiple models. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we've got multiple models in our database. We've got astronaut anime. Uh, we've got the C, the steps, the anime style prompt. Uh, and we've got astronaut uh, normal as well with enhance and C. Whatever. Okay, so if I call astronaut anime secret generation, uh, just an alert, please wait. And uh, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting and it should be done yeah so that's the anime model in the front end i did not have access to the api call any leakage happening nope 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 just the image came through so uh this is pretty pretty kind of interesting space uh we've built multiple such projects uh, if you need a hand with this project, just get in touch. We're more than happy to help you out. We've, uh, we have understood the ins and outs of OpenAI and Stable Diffusion many times now. So a uh, quick recap, you can make an API call to Stability AI. You can uh, pass parameters secretly, uh, depending on, you can have multiple models in your database and pass them safely and securely. Uh, you can make an API call from the front end or you can make an API call from the back end. You can display images. Uh, of course, this is just the beginning and scratches the surface. Uh, in terms of like uh, what you can do, so there are, you can host a lot more models in uh, re on Replicate or Banana Dev. Uh, we've worked with both, I think. Uh, with, with models for AI, we kind of like uh, text to video, uh, style transfer, kind of image restoration. It depends on which model, how you host your own model. Uh, Stability AI provides like a, a, Stability AI has a lot more models, but in terms of how many we can access through API using Dream Studio, we only get a limited subset and we only get a limited set of parameters. In terms of like the open source world altogether, you can host your own models uh, on Replicate or Banana Dev or Hugging Face, wherever, and uh, then just work with them in Bubble as well. If you are interested in more tutorials around those, Replicate, Banana, others, uh, please do drop a comment below. And I'd really like it if you subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much. Bye.